Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Finland once again. And that of course means that we're going to have a look at yet another beer from the latest instalment of the Riku box. So first and foremost, a massive shout out and thank you to Riku Sanaxanaho, my Finnish beer mule. It's thanks to him that you guys are getting to enjoy a series of Finnish reviews here on Rampant Lion Reviews. But he always picks me up some really interesting stuff. He's a lovely guy who's very knowledgeable about beer and the beers that he sent me this time have been pretty damn good so far. So I'm looking forward to working my way through the rest of them over the next little while. So as always, a massive kipis and kitos to Riku for making this review and the other finished ones possible. But uh, yeah, for this review then, we are gonna return to a brewery that has now featured on the channel a good few times before. The impression that I have of this brewery is that they're actually very well rounded and they do lots of different styles and they always turn out pretty solidly actually. And the beer that we're looking at today from them is a style that I haven't had from them before. It's a style that I very much enjoy though. And generally speaking, this is actually quite a difficult style to find these days because there's just not many people actually brewing them. If memory serves me correctly, this is one that Riku also gifted to me. I don't think I asked him to pick up this beer for me, so uh, kind of kudos to him as well for picking this one out for me because he knew he knows that I like this style. So uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. But yeah, for this review then, we are going to return to Riku's hometown, to Olu, in the northwest of Finland. And we're having a look at another beer from Maistila Panimo. So this beer is called Brownosaurus. It comes in at 5.4% ABV, and this one is an American brown ale. So yes, should be pretty interesting. But one of my favourite beers when I was just getting into craft beer, actually, was the good old Brooklyn Brown. And uh, then, yeah, of course, I started expo exploring Imperial Brown Ales and stuff like this uh, after that. And probably one of my favourite brown ales to this day would be the Karma Citra from Beer Here in Bornholm, uh, the little island in the middle of the Baltic from uh, that belongs to Denmark. That's probably still one of my favourite Imperial Browns that I've ever had. So uh, yeah, this is a style I very much enjoy, but I very rarely get to review these anymore, which I think is a terrible shame. So if you have some brown ale recommendations, put them in the comment section below and let me know what they are. But yeah, definitely cool to review what I believe is my first Finnish American brown ale. So yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see what it has in store for us. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from my Stila Panimo before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated and remember that you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. Just go up to the search bar, put in your hometown, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever you like in there. If I've reviewed beers from your local area, they will pop up. Failing that though, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries and you'll find this one in the finished playlist along with many other things which will of course be being added to over the next little while and for the foreseeable future. But yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and we'll chat a little bit about Maistila Panimo. So, Maistila Panimo, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Olu in the northwest of Finland and the company was founded back in 2015 by the Haru brothers. So this is Yoni and Riku, not the Riku that I'm talking about with that sent me all these beers. Uh, but apparently Riku first developed a curiosity about, about beer during a trip to Germany, the Netherlands and Belgium. And this was where he first encountered lots of different beer styles. But after this, he really started to appreciate the European brewing culture and started to explore it further. But later on, he attended the Copenhagen Beer Festival and he really enjoyed the atmosphere there. And someone actually suggested to him that he should try brewing beer for himself. And he thought, well, why not? So he called Yoni and told him about uh, his idea. And then a few months later, they bought a 20 litre Braumeister home brewing kit and started experimenting together back in about 2011. But in the first, in the very early part of their commercial story, they collaborated with other local breweries who helped them buy up their own equipment. And then they started to release their beers in August of 2015. But over the last few years, they've basically just been building up their capacity, developing new recipes and getting their beers out there a little bit more. And they have proved to be very popular 
from what I understand. But as of January 2023, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 285 different kinds of beer, and in total they're producing in the region of 60,000 litres of beer per year. Although that figure may be a little bit inaccurate, I will need to ask Riku about that. But in October of 2022, they announced that they were going to have a pause over the first half of 2023, so it might be a bit difficult to get their beers this year, but I'm sure they will be back and ready to go again toward the end of the year. But uh, yeah, like I say, in my experience, this brewery tends to do a lot of different styles, and I think Riku would probably tell you the same, because uh, we've had IPAs from them, I think we've had a barley wine as well, a few kind of fruity sours, and uh, a few different uh, yeah, darker things as well, if I remember correctly. But uh, yeah, a very solid brewery in my experience, and it's always nice to try things from Riku's local breweries, of course, as well. These guys and uh, Sony Sari, I think, are the two best known breweries from Olu, but there are a few others. Uh, in that region as well that we've covered on the channel once or twice so far and hopefully more going forward. I think Nilo is another one who are doing laggers and stuff like that too. But uh, yeah, that's everything we really need to say about my Stila Panimo for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can of course check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So uh, yeah, Let's crack on then and have a little look at this beer. So just to let you have a little look at the artwork there for Brownosaurus, it is pretty nice. You can see plain black bottle cap on this one. My Stila don't have their own bottle caps at the moment, but you can see the My Stila Panimo symbol here at the bottom of the, uh, the bottle, which I think is uh, pretty nice actually. But uh, yeah, 330 milliliter bottle, this one, which is standard for My Stila. All of the beers are bottled, if I remember correctly. But uh, yeah, should be pretty nice this one. It does say on the side that it's American hopped. I did have a little look earlier to see what hops had been used in this one, but I actually couldn't um, figure it out. But it says this one is an India brown ale. Uh, in other words, that is just an American brown ale, to be honest with you. But yeah, 5.4% ABV. I think we can get this out and have a little look at it then. Let's do this. My first brown ale in... However long, I honestly can't remember, but I miss this style. I always used to love a bit of Brooklyn Brown. And it was always nice to find Imperial Brown Ales. Potentially the last Brown Ale I had might have been from uh, Kernel Brewery in, in London, actually, come to think of it. But yeah, let's get this guy out into the glass and see what we have. So, um, yes. Right then, so in terms of the um, in terms of the appearance of this beer, it's pretty much what you would expect from uh, an American brown ale. I think it must. I don't know how old this beer is actually. It says uh, best before April of twenty twenty three. So maybe this has been in the bottle a few months actually. But American brown ales will last for a good amount of time. Um, so because they are a more malt forward style, but you can. And I was thinking that just from the size of the head in this beer. But you can see that this one's poured with about at least a finger and a half of a frothy, I would say kind of fawn coloured head. I'll just let you have a wee look at that. You can see there are lots of little small bubbles in there, but a few kind of uh, bumps as well, which are pretty nice. And of course, we've got a little bit of water around the edge of the glass there. But uh, yeah, a nice looking head, I have to say. In terms of the colour of the beer, I would say that this one is a lovely kind of very dark sort of chestnutty colour. It's actually not a million miles away from the, the, the colour of the glass bottle that we poured it out of. But yeah, lovely, very dark chestnutty colour. And if we shine the light through it, it has a little bit of a brighter kind of mahogany type colour to it as well. But one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there. But overall, it does look pretty nice. But remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malt that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort bottle is going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. And any barrel ageing or adjuncts that you're dealing with as well can uh, play a role in determining that. But in terms of what you'd expect from an American style brown ale, this one, it looks pretty nice, I have to say. So uh, yeah, let's have a wee look at the aroma of this beer and see how we get on. I don't think we need to say anything more about the appearance of this beer. Oh yeah, I have to say that is pretty nice. 
and again pretty much what I would expect to the, the style so I mean first impression is you've got a lovely fruitiness that you would expect of any kind of American amber red brownie or whatever you're getting that out of the beer right away there's a lovely little bit of a kind of green there's a lovely little bit of a kind of green component to this one as well and then you've got the bigger kind of malty base in there that just gives the whole beer a little bit of uh, of sweetness so yeah the way like i said the way that this beer goes together i think is um is very very nice actually so uh yeah love it very good Yeah. Yeah, aroma wise, I think this really is very, very nice. On top of the um yeah. It's to me it just gets sweeter and sweeter the more that you smell of it too. I love just taking a bit of time to enjoy the aromas of the beers before you get stuck into them, especially when it's styles like this that you just don't come across all that often. But um, yeah, this is lovely. So let's just try and break down the aroma of the beer a little bit more and figure out what's going on. So yeah, the backbone of this beer then, you absolutely have a little bit, you've got a little bit of that kind of nice bread crusty um, character forming the back of the beer. It's like a really sweet rye bread bread crust. And then on top of that, you have a little bit of a more, um, on top of that bread crust, You've got a little bit of a more kind of straight up, um, sweet, kind of chewy, rye bready character coming out of this beer. And that's really nice, I have to say. Within that, though, you have got little elements of, um, you've got a little touch of woodiness and a very slight nuttiness to it. But I'd say that the, the overall vibe of the malt base in this beer is that it's very sweet and kind of almost chewy in a sense. Um, I'm trying to find the right descriptor for it, but... It's almost like a very, very, very sweet kind of brandy soaked bread or something like that. But like I say, a bit of bread crust, a sweet rye bready character and a little touch of woody and nutty note. But then, yeah, you've got this really kind of sweet, almost like brandy or cognac um, grappa type uh, soaked bready character coming out of this one. It's really interesting. It's like that really highly caramelised stuff that gets stuck to the side of the baking tray when you make a Christmas pudding. There's a good little bit of that going on within the malt base in this beer. Um, and that's one of the things that for me, the American brownie was very underrated style, I think. Uh, and like I say, you don't find all that many of them. I love Imperial Reds and I love Imperial Brownies as well. Um, but yeah, the aroma that comes out of this, just it really is very, very nice. Um, but yeah, on top of the kind of bready characters, you do start to get some of the, the straight up brown sugary notes out of the beer. So you can smell definitely a little bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity note coming out of it in the middle of the nose, straight up sweet caramel. There's a little bit of a toasty kind of brown sugary character in there as well. But like I say, sweeter caramel, um, a little bit of a toasty brown sugar underneath. And uh, yeah, I think that kind of covers everything about the, the kind of more malty side of the beer to be honest with you the other thing i would say about this is that it almost has uh the the, the kind of malty characteristics in this beer almost have a little bit of that tobacco type sweetness to them which is really interesting used to mess around a lot with uh you know tobacco for toxicology labs and stuff like this and the aroma of it was beautiful but obviously it's a fucking horrible thing to do to your body but yeah the you do get this kind of tobacco -y, as I say, brandy, grappa, liqueur, soap, bready type character out of this beer. It really has a lot of that going on in the malt base. It's very aromatic, actually. I'd love to see what the malt bill in this one is to figure out what's going on. But obviously the yeast and the hops are going to play a role too. But yeah, I think we can go on and actually talk about the hoppy side of the beer then before we taste it. So yeah, on the hoppy side of things, it's kind of what you would expect from this, uh, from this style. So there's a little touch of earthiness to it, definitely. Nice little bit of that going on. So lovely little bit of earthiness coming out of the beer. Uh, you also have, um, you also have a little bit of a more kind of um, herbally type character in there as well. But so just a wee bit of earthiness, a little bit of herbal character. But yeah, of course you're getting that big American 
green component coming out of this one. There's a good little bit of floral character in there, a little bit of a brighter grassiness, and of course you've got that nice zesty character coming out of it as well, which I think personally is is very, very nice. Um yeah, aroma wise, I do like how this um how this all goes together. But yeah, it does get a, a thumbs up for me on that green component. The fruity side of this one is, is pretty interesting too. I've always found this with, with brown ales. The fruits in the aroma turn out a wee bit different to how they do in the actual uh, flavour of the beer. So we'll need to see how we get we go on with that. But yeah, the fruity side of the beer for me actually has quite a little bit of a sharper kind of... It's not quite raisin, but it's like a... It is kind of like a more kind of... Like really sharp sultana type note that you get out of this one but underneath of course you've got the more dry sultana you've got a little touch of a datey character to it but uh, yeah the yeah you've got that lovely kind of as i said you do have that sort of lovely kind of just raisiny sharpness but kind of more like sultanas at the same time a bit date in there regular sultanas maybe a little touch of pear and then you've got sort of black currants and and, and you know a brighter blackberry type note out of this beer it's a very kind of cakey um fruity note that you get out of this one uh, i wonder if there's a bit of will you met hop in this i wouldn't be surprised will you met was one that i knew i know works very well with brown ales and barley wines and stuff like that actually because it gives you these kind of black currenty blackberry sort of things but yeah aroma wise this beer certainly has piqued my interest i do like how everything goes together in this so as I always say take a wee bit of time just to ponder over that aroma before you get stuck into it but yeah i think that it's about time that we try this one and see what it's all about so yeah this is the brownosaurus a 5.4 percent american brown ale from uh, my steel panimo in Oru in the northwest of finland thank you again to riku for gifting me this one i'm pretty sure this was one that he gave me as a gift but let's crack on and see what this beer is all about. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Yeah, I have to say that is pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty interesting. This one, it's actually. Of course, I have to remember as well that this it's not an imperial brown ale. I've had I, I usually like the the brown ales to be kind of big and sweet and stuff like this, but I have to remember this one is not quite as heavy in, in alcohol and things, so it's not going to be quite as kind of powerful, as some of the other ones are. But as a straight up kind of drinkable brown ale, that's for me really well done. It gives you that multi character and the bit of dryness that you want it gives you the hoppy side of things that you want and it also gives you the fruity character this beer it's one of these ones that is um you know how do we say this is a good beer to try for something different um and like i said this is the thing about my stila um and i'd be curious to hear riku's thoughts on whether he would agree with this but for me my stila are a brewery that they like to try and experiment and brew different styles and things and this is a a really just nice example of um, the American brown ale. They actually say on the bottle that they would consider it as a brown IPA, which kind of makes sense. But I don't know if there really is a difference between an American brown ale and a, a brown IPA. Obviously, just you know, maybe you just hop it a little bit more, but that's it. That's by the by. But like I say, I think they've done another solid beer, this one. The brown ale, like I say, is not the most popular of styles, but I certainly... Uh, enjoy it and I think my still have done a pretty solid job with this one so uh, yeah it's all good but yeah let's try and break it down and just describe the beer a wee bit more for you in depth so in the middle third of your palate with this one then so you can feel that there you've got a lovely little bit of a kind of smooth Slight, almost like slightly woody backbone to it, but at the same time it's like a kind of dry, like black bread or something like that. I don't know if I would, I think in the aroma I was describing it as rye bread, but it almost strikes me as being a little bit more like a kind of black bread 
type quality but whatever it is it's nice as i say so you've got that bread crusty backbone there you've got a little bit of the woody character sitting on top of that as well and um yeah personally i think that goes together really nicely but yeah the fruity side of things is um is good in this one for sure as well i can get more i get more and more of the fruits i drink this but like i say um like sort of rye black ready bread crust in the backbone on top of that you've got a nice kind of smooth woody layer toward the front of that middle third of your palate there are maybe very very slight touches of nuttiness come out in the aftertaste so that's worth paying attention to as well but above the kind of woody-ish layer you have a bit more of a kind of fluffy um you do have a little bit more of a kind of fluffy and slightly eerie brown bread i actually i don't know if i would say that the bready character in this beer is overly fluffy come to think of it it's not more soft but you have as i say you got quite a little bit of that brown bready character in there um and it is as i say a more it's not too oily and too dense a brownie this one which i think is quite interesting So, the, as I would say, the on top of the kind of bready layer, you can feel there's a bit of a leathery, like down the middle, if you go down the middle line of your palate, you can feel there's this sort of leathery brown sugary character. And as you move out toward the edges of your palate, it does get a little touch more, it does get a little touch lighter. And things as well, which is quite interesting. So yeah, definitely a little bit of that going on for sure. Um, so you've got that leathery brown sugar layer. And then on top of that, in the dead centre of your palate, you do get a little bit of a kind of sweet uh, caramelly circle there. So you can feel you've got a little tiny touch of like a treacly molasses sort of thing. And as you move further out from that, there's maybe little elements of biscuit. But you do also have within the kind of brown sugary notes of this beer and the bread as well you've almost got this kind of very slightly dry coffee bean ish type uh, type flavor coming out of the beer uh, i'm noticing on the back of the the bottle here it says it because it has the swedish as well as the finnish it says havre which is um which is oats so i mean the kind of smoothness that you get out of this beer in that sense the kind of because above the kind of brown bready character which is quite airy and almost kind of crisp in a way you do have that degree of smoothness so that's probably what's giving you the kind of leathery brown sugary note the kind of dry brown sugary note and then you've got the sweeter caramelly note sitting on top of that so that's quite interesting i have to say i do like how that um how that goes together in this one so yeah the way the beer goes together in this, I think, is um, in the malty side of things. It's quite straightforward, but it is quite nice. So, yeah, that covers the middle third of the palate then. The border region between middle and back third of your palate, you do get a little touch of a bready build-up in there, which I do enjoy. Then the base of that back third of the palate has a wee bit more. You do get the bread crust in there, but as I always say, sweeter flavours come out further forward on the palate, darker flavours and more kind of bitter flavours come out further back. So you do have that more kind of bread crusty type quality as well, the dry bread crusty notes. Uh, above that, you've got a wee touch of an almost kind of crackery note as well, but then you get a taller, more airy brown bready card. And at the same time, the brown bread is quite uh, the brown bread is quite crisp, actually. Um, and then above that, I think you're getting some of the more airy yeasty uh, notes coming out of the beer. Uh, and the, the kind of more eerie yeasty notes, it is like a slightly sweeter and more caramelised, like brown bready character. There's a wee bit of honeycomb and stuff in there as well. But uh, yeah, definitely on the back third of the palate, you can feel the flavour is taller. Then as you come further forward, it just condenses down and squashes together that little bit more. So uh, yeah, the way that the beer goes together in that particular regard, I think, is um, is quite nice. So uh, yeah, the malty and yeasty side of this beer I think is quite well done. But like I say, it's quite a light brownie. Oh, this one, and I do I do wonder actually how much of that is down to the 
the water in Olu because obviously the, the Nordic water, when you especially when you're that far north, it's going to be very, very clean actually. Um, and I think we've maybe commented on this with the My Stila beers before, although in fairness, I think the ones we've had have been slightly thicker styles than this, come to think of it. But anyway, that's just an interesting point about this one. I think the water, you can just feel that this is quite a clean beer rather than being a little bit thicker. So I'd love to see them try like a new, because they've definitely got the flavour profile in the malt in the malty side of this beer correct. I'd love to see My Stila do like a proper imperial uh, brown ale and just go for it and thicken it up a wee bit. Because they're absolutely on the right path for that with this beer. But let's focus on the hoppy side of things with this one then. Back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little touch of earthiness in there. As you move further forward, you do get a little bit of herbal character, but you can feel that the beer becomes progressively more kind of floral. Uh, you can definitely feel that the beer becomes progressively more floral as you move uh, forward, actually. So, yeah, that's quite nice in this one for sure as well. Uh, but around the front curve of your palate, you've got a little bit of a lighter grassiness in there, and you can just feel the sort of cleanliness um, to the mouthfeel in this beer too, actually. Um, so yeah, the way that that goes together, I have to say, is pretty, uh, is pretty nice. Uh, on the... Um, the green component, as I say, kind of lingers. You get more and more floral character out of this into the aftertaste too. But on the front third of your palate, then, you can feel uh, in that border region, you've got a little bit of a more... In the border region between front and middle third of your palate, you get a little bit of a kind of bready build-up in there. A wee bit of a kind of sweet rye bread note in the base of that front third of your palate. Smooth little woody sort of thing. A wee bit of a kind of rye bready character. Then above that, you've got that nice little bit of a kind of wet... Uh, you get that nice little kind of wet oily bubble where the fruity juicy esters roll the way out of the beer. So let's focus on that side of things to round off the tasting. So for me, this beer, the fruity side of it is quite interesting. As I say, just because it's, I find this beer like quite light and quite clean. It's um. With, within that, you've got some really interesting fruity caramel. When you first take it in, you do get this slightly sharper, almost like sultana. You do get this really kind of sharper sultana type sweetness uh, coming out of it, which I, I do quite like. So that's on the top there. And as you move further down, you get a little bit of a dainty character. You get the straight up dry sultanas. And as you move further forward into the middle of that front third of your palate, it's got more of a kind of oily pear type quality coming out of it as well. So yeah, you've got that more oily sort of pearish quality and then yeah, as you move into the front half, as you move into the front half of that uh, front third of your tongue, you start to get the slightly more red fruity characters there. So there's going to be a little touch of fig in the middle of the front half of your front third of your palate. Then, you know, you get a little touch of black currant underneath and then there's going to be just that more kind of oily sultana type quality on top of it. But yeah, the fruity side of this one, I think, is really nice to And probably the fruity side of the beer is my favourite part of it, actually. Um, so yeah, I think this is really nice. This is one of these beers that's really kind of grown on me the more that I've, I've drank of it, I have to say. But like I say, the, the thing about this one for me is um, it's 5.4%. It is a nice drinkable brown ale. They've got the flavour profile of this one pretty much spot on actually for the style and this is what I've said about my style before these guys like to experiment and they always do solid versions of uh, the different styles that they look at I would love to see them actually try uh, and take this style imperial because I think one of the things that one of the things with this beer is because of probably the, the way the water is up there to me this feels very clean and very light and maybe I just want a wee bit more maltiness uh, out of this particular style you know it's a brown ale you want that but as I say that's me absolutely nitpicking uh, with this beer I think they've done a really nice job of this I really do so yeah I would love to see them do like an imperial uh, brownosaurus or uh, Thai brownosaurus rex or something like that if they like dinosaurs then do that yeah Thai brownosaurus rex 
is maybe the way to go. Take this up to, it's only 5.4%, so it is very light. Take this up to, you know, 9 or 10 and see what they can do. I'd love to see more brown ales from these guys because, as I say, flavour profile was really well done. But uh, mouthfeel-wise, I've said a few things about this. Like I say, for me, this is kind of right in the middle of the spectrum. It's kind of light end of mid-bodied for me. The carbonation is very smooth. The whole beer feels really quite clean. The, mouth, uh, the, the malty side of this beer, you do have a good little bit of dryness to it and it almost has, um, I don't know if you could describe it, the, the sort of dryness that you get out of this beer, it has the breadiness and the graininess and the smoothness in there, but you've also got that little bit of, um, it's almost got like a kind of aromatic coffee bean type dryness to it, but there's a wee bit of sweetness in the malt base there as well, you've got some nice fruity characters, and like I said, I just think, I think this beer does go together very, very well in that sense, and it gets a big thumbs up for me on the, the basis of that. But uh, yeah, I really do like how um, how all of this pieces together actually. So um, yeah, the fruity side of it too, you've got a little bit of dryness in there, you've got a little bit of wetness. And uh, yeah, I do like it with this one. So yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. This was the um, the name, the, the Brownosaurus. I was gonna say Brownosaurus Rex, I've been confusing myself there. A 5.4% American style brown ale from My Steel Panimo in Olu, in the northwest of Finland. Another very solid beer from these guys, and like I say, very experimental. They like to do lots of different things, so hopefully we'll see some Imperial Browns from them going forward, because they've been pretty spot on with the flavour profile on this beer. But yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from My Steel Panimo as well. And hopefully we'll get some more My Stella beers to look at from the next review box. And as I say, we'll see when their uh, when their pause finishes. But until then, slant it, skull. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Check out my social media. Check out theirs. Big thank you to Riku once again. And I'll see you guys later. Slant it, skull. Cheers. Keep this and ketos.